We'll save working some KB problems until uh, a little bit later. For now, the next thing I want to talk about is the acid-base properties of salts. And we'll start by talking about the relationship between Ka and KB for a conjugate pair. Our example in this case, is going to be acetic acid acetate. But we could have picked anything. And we know the Ka value of acetic acid. It's 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And we know that because we can get it off the uh, Ka list for one of the conversion equation sheets where it is. Um, but we don't know the K, so we know now that acetate is a base, it's a conjugate base. We don't know its KB value. And to find that, here's what we're going to do. We're going to write out a Ka reaction for acetic acid. And Ka reactions, just like KB reactions, always have water as a reactant. We transfer our proton. And we get acetate. And this has a Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. I don't know if that's going to fit over here. So, But it should be somewhere over there. And I'll move this so we can see what I just wrote. Then uh, we're going to write our Kb reaction for our acetate. It's going to go CH3COO minus. There's a minus in there next to that O. Uh, always add water. This time we transfer the proton the other way. I know. I know. Hang out for a minute while we go through this process. Uh, it's going to be OH minus. And now we return our acetic acid. And our KB is a question mark. Now, from our equilibrium chapter, we know that when you add reactions, you multiply K values. So add reactions, multiply K uh, values. And that when we add the reactions, you can see that we've got an acetate on one side and an acetate on the other, a acetic acid and an acetic acid. We can cross both of those out and write what's left, which is H2O plus H2O goes to hydronium plus hydroxide. And this is what's called the KW reaction. And KW equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. I can't remember if that's on your conversion equation sheets, but if it is not, please do memorize it. I have to check. Um, but now remember, so it's going to be Ka times Kb because they're added to up equals KW. And again, what we're doing here is completely general. It doesn't rely on us being acetic acid and acetate. Uh, we could do this for any acid and base that are conjugate pairs. It does have to be conjugate pairs. Um, and so now if we want to find Kb, it's going to be Kw over Ka. And these are all capital Ks, just to be clear. Get up there. There we go. Um, and that's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 over 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. And let's multiply this out. Uh, one exponent oop, minus 14 divided by 1.8 exponent minus five. I get 5.5555 times 10 to the minus 10 to two sig figs, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. And that is the KB value for CH3COO 
the conjugate base of acetic acid. And this, ex these expressions, these process is how you're going to find the Ka and Kb values, Kb in this case, for uh, any ion. So given the Ka and Kb for the molecules, you can find any ion this way. More about conjugate pairs. Well, so uh, Ka and Kb for a conjugate pair, for conjugate pairs, for I would say a conjugate pair, are always related, or, or I'd say this, their product equals Kw. So their product equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Get down there. Um, so if Ka is larger, let's say this. So, so here's 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And here's 1. And we will only do this for weak acids. So... Um, that's why we can limit ourselves to one. All of our Ka and Kb values will be less than one. Okay. So if we have a larger Ka, its conjugate will be smaller. Or uh, larger K, conjugate base, Kb, will be smaller. And we can see this in this last example. So we had a Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. Because they're both related by this Kw expression, this one has to be times 10 to the minus 10. And you can see they don't add up to uh, minus 14, well, they do when you consider the 5.6 and the 1.8. So they'll always be like something like that. So if one's minus five, the other one's minus 10. If the Ka was minus 10, then the Kb would be minus five for the conjugate pair. Um, and uh, a couple other things that we want to note. So weak acids, which we will now call Wa, have weak conjugate bases. And we'll call it conjugate weak base, right? One of them's got to be the conjugate anyway. Um, two, strong acids something we've been dealing with for a while now. So strong acids have very large Ka values. When you do this whole thing with, so Ka equals very large, much larger than one, very large. Okay. Scribble, scribble. Um, that means that uh, conjugate base uh, Kb will be less than 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. And in fact, usually much less, that's a double less than sign, which means much less than. And so we will come up with a name for this. When you have a strong acid, the conjugate base will be very weak. Or inert. And this will always be true. So weak acids have conjugate weak bases. Strong acids have very weak or inert conjugate bases. Strong bases will have very weak or inert conjugate weak acids. So it's it's like the larger one is, the smaller the other is. And now let me say a word about what do I mean by very weak or inert. Because 
the KB value will be less or much less than 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Very weak or inert will mean uh, no effect, effect, no effect on pH. So we'll have strong acids and strong bases, which have a very strong effect on pH. We'll have weak acids and weak bases, which will have a, a bit of an effect. And we'll have very weak or inert bases and acids, which will have no effect on pH. That's why, so inert means no effect, no reaction. Very weak is another word that some people use. Um, I usually prefer inert, meaning no reaction, but very weak is another term you'll hear.